Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. And now it's going to list those that won't inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed you are sanctified. You are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and the Spirit of our God. So you were those things, but you're not any longer. So what happens to the Christian that is still those things? What happens just because you call yourself a Christian, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Mr. Isaiah, he pops into the group chat at the last minute, and he says, Oh, see, this means if you're still doing these things, you're not saved. But the text, if you just keep on reading or read a little before, he's making a comparison. The way that they're acting towards one another is unrighteous. It is sinful, it is wicked, it is wrong. Don't you know that that's not going to inherit the kingdom of God? You're washed, you're sanctified, you're justified. Start acting like who you really are in Christ. Hey guys, welcome back. This is Pastor Jesse here. You're watching Bible Line, and this is another video in our Pastor Reacts series. We've got Mr. Isaiah here. We are continuing through his video titled, God Told Me Some Christians Will Go to Hell. We have looked at Luke 13. We have looked at Matthew 7. We did a review on Hebrews 10. And now we're going to look at 1 Corinthians 6. Mr. Isaiah here is trying to make the case that people are going to go to hell and call themselves Christians. And he's saying that we have to do works. It's more than just, you know, doing works. You got to do more works. He never really defines what that is, but he's just trying to sell fear. And it's doing very well. That video is very popular. Go to the comment section on those videos. It's really heartbreaking. And just encourage people the truth of the gospel. But <clears throat> he's about to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. You probably know 9, 10, and 11. And make the case that if you do those things, you're not going to heaven. So let's hear what he has to say. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses, what verse do I have down here? Um, uh, no, that's the wrong verse. Let's go 1 Corinthians 5, 12. I think I want to look for 12. Here it is. All things are lawful for me, but all things are helpful. Oh, that's not it. Where am I going here? I have it written down. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10. I don't know why I saved it wrong. Sorry, okay, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 10. Here we go. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. And now it's going to list those that won't inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed you are sanctified. You are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and the Spirit of our God. So you were those things, but you're not any longer. So what happens to the Christian that is still those things? What happens just because you call yourself a Christian, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. So I wanted him to just fully speak there because I want you to see what he's making these verses say. These verses are reminding the Corinthian believers who are already washed and sanctified and justified. We don't have to go to verse 11 for that. We can go to chapter 1, and we're going to do that in a moment. But he's reminding them that the flesh, which produces all those things, um, fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, effeminate, abusers of themselves of mankind, thieves, coveters, drunkards, revilers, extortioners, that flesh nature will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's why he reminds them in verse 11, this is who you really are. Stop acting like who you were before. He says, such were some of you, but you are washed, you are sanctified, you are justified in the name of our Lord Jesus the Spirit, and by the Spirit of our living God. The Spirit beareth witness of itself. That sealing of the Holy Spirit happens the moment a person believes. So what Paul is saying here is not, if you still do these things, then you're not a child of God. He says, don't do these things because these things are not in accordance to your new nature. This is teaching about the two natures. We have a flesh nature that we got when we were born, and we have a spiritual nature, a new nature, a new birth, which comes through with the sealing of the Holy Spirit that cannot sin because it's born of God. 
We're commanded to walk in that nature, the new nature, not the old nature. But I want you to understand here, he says, what about those people who still do those things? Those people aren't really saved, you know? No, because the audience in which Paul is writing to, they're already converted, but they have a lot of sin problems. They have, they have a lot of walking in the flesh problems. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 says this, verse 1, Paul, called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God, and Sothenes, our brother, unto the church of God which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Jesus, called to be saints, with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours, grace be unto you. He's going to include a man here in chapter 5 that is sleeping with his mother-in-law. The man is still sanctified. He's still going to heaven because he's got his trust in Jesus Christ. But he's living wickedly. And, and Paul says, "Let's we should pray if he's not converted, deliver his body up to Satan. What For what purpose? I mean, does that mean he's going to hell? No, but that he can stop the ability to live this sinful life and be with the Lord and stop bringing damage to the church. <clears throat> What's the real problem in Corinth? 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 1. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. So he's not saying that they're not spiritually uh, born again, but he's saying they're young in the Lord. Why? Because they're still playing around with sin and, and not calling it sin. Verse 2, I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. Our little daughter at home, I'm not feeding her prime steak. She she, she, she got to have the soft stuff. So she, you know, she's only got a couple little teeth. Adorable, by the way. But she she's not old enough to start digesting food. You put a, um, a piece of food that's too big, she could choke. This is a comparison here. Paul said, I have to feed you with milk and not meat because you're not strong enough spiritually to bear it. He's not questioning their conversion. He is rightfully calling out, you're young in the Lord. Grow up. <laughs> like, stop acting like babies and grow up in application of the word. Verse 3 of 1 Corinthians 3. Ye are yet carnal, Whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are you, not, are you not carnal and walk as men? Now that was three chapters before what he says here in 1 Corinthians 6. Don't forget, if you're new here to Bible Line, to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. Make sure you set it to all so whenever we post anything, you get an alert. Also, make sure to like, comment, and share this video. That helps get the video out to new people that have not discovered the channel. And also, we appreciate all the feedback and discussion in the comment section. It's good. If you have a question or a video that you would like me to answer, react to, send us an email, questions at BibleLineMinistries.org, right here on the screen. And we'll do our best to get you a written response and make a video in response as well. Let's get back to today's react. You see how Mr. Isaiah here is going to different trees and picking off fruit and making some smoothie and says the Bible did it? That's not what the Bible says. So read it in context now. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? What does he mean by unrighteous? Those who have not believed, because that's all they have is their unrighteousness. Don't be deceived. Fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, effeminate, abusers of themselves and mankind. All these kind of people were still in Corinth, and they're believers. But they're living in their unrighteous state. They need to live in their righteous state. Walk in the spirit and not the lust of the flesh. That's why he says in verse 11, And such were some of you, but ye are washed. That's a present tense thing. You are sanctified. That's present tense. You are justified. And we know that word justified is huge. They're, they, they stand righteous before God. In the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. What is he talking about here? They were taking each other to law. That, that's what this first chapter is talking about. Look in, look in, uh, or that's what verse 1 of this chapter is talking about. Look at verse 1. Dare any of you, having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust and not before the saints? Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? He's talking about see past this, the things you can, the material things of this world and your and your first nature, realize who you are in Christ. Verse 5 says, I speak to your shame. 
Is it so that there is no not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren, but brother goeth to law with brother, and that before the unbelievers. Now therefore there is utterly a fault among you, because you go to law with one another. What do you not rather take wrong? Why do you not rather suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Nay, you do wrong and defraud, and that your brethren. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? I'm smiling right now because... Man, the scripture just makes it clear. Mr. Isaiah, he pops into the group chat at the last minute and he says, oh, see, this means if you're still doing these things, you're not saved. But the text, if you just keep on reading or read a little before, he's making a comparison. The way that they're acting towards one another is unrighteous. It is sinful. It is wicked. It is wrong. Don't you know that that's not going to inherit the kingdom of God? You're washed. You're sanctified. You're justified. Start acting like who you really are in Christ. But Isaiah, Mr. Isaiah here, I say Mr. Isaiah because I, you know, there's a book in the Bible called Isaiah. So Mr. Isaiah here, I want to be clear, teaches something different. Teaches that, well, if you still have this sin, you're not really saved. And that's just a shame. It really is a shame because it just leads people down a really dark path. All right, let's continue here. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? It's no joke, guys. It's possible as a Christian you can think you're good and die and go to hell. All right, guys. So that's it for today. And the next time that we meet, we will uh, continue through this video. I just want to say again, if you're here today and you are not sure that you have eternal life or you're looking to your maintaining of good works to prove that you're saved, I pray that you would go from unbelief to belief, which is to say that you would put your trust in the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who shed his blood on that cross, died, was buried, and rose again to pay for your sins. Put your trust in him and not in your own good works. If you want to send us a video to react to, send us an email, questions at BibleLineMinistries.org. It can be a video or it can be a question. We'll do our best to get a response to you. Until next time, keep looking up. Jesus Christ is coming soon. Thank you and God bless you. If you enjoyed today's episode of Bible Line, make sure to subscribe to the channel and share this video with a friend. Do you have a Bible question? Send us an email, questions at BibleLineMinistries.org, and we'll do our best to get you an answer. Or you can leave your question in the comments of this video. Be sure to check the links in the description for more clear Bible teaching. Bible Line is a ministry of Calvary Community Church located in Tampa, Florida.